Hey everybody, uh, tonight I have another one of those start to finish videos that I'd like to do. This one's uh, going to be about 45 minutes long and I'm going to take you from the beginning to the end of creating a, a, a nice scene with an elf and a deer in the forest. I'm going to use a lot of off the shelf products for this one. Uh, we're going to go into Poser, do some uh, cloth simulations and then uh, build a scene up in view and then do some post production in GIMP. So, so it should be a good bit of fun. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to start out here in Poser um, and just delete the uh, default character that it puts in. And I'm going to go to my library and add the uh, most popular uh, female character of all time, which is the Vicky 4. And actually 4.2 to be specific. Alright, now I know I'm going to use some dynamic clothing, so I'm going to just jump up to uh, frame 20 to uh, start with because in order to do uh, dynamic cloth you have to take advantage of the animation system um, because it kind of animates the cloth going through a draping uh, sequence and uh, usually you want to go up to uh, one of the you know couple of couple dozen frames in 20 frames in do your posing there and you need to keep the uh, frame one at the base post base pose so um, we'll go in here and we'll give her a quick pose. Now her legs are going to be covered with a dress. I'm not going to spend too much time on those. However, we'll give her a, a slight tilt to her hips. Just to give it kind of a, a what's called a contrapposto stance, which is uh, her weight resting on one leg. And I think for this arm, I'm not going to do too much. She's just going to be uh, walking through the woods kind of leisurely. Oops. Now for this arm, she's going to be uh, putting her hand against um, an animal, uh, a deer maybe. So we'll um, see, bend it at about 90 degrees. I'll twist it out. Move that back a little bit. That doesn't look so good. And twist this a bit more here. Let's give her head a nice quick pose. Don't want to spend too long on this. But you do need to make it look uh, somewhat expressive somehow. And something you might want to do to position your legs a little bit differently is to turn on the inverse kinematics. Um, that's a, uh, a system where the, the feet will get locked in place and then you can kind of move around them. So we go up to figure, use inverse kinematics. We want the left leg and the right leg. And we're going to just move her hips. And a little bit more of a twist to her head maybe. As if she's looking off to something in the distance. Alright, so now we're going to change her body shape. and we're not, For this I'm just going to use a preset um, and that will fall under the poses here. Uh, this will be something I bought off of uh, Daz3D.com or something like that. And actually, the, one of the first things I want to do, now my, your library might be organized differently than mine. You can actually go into your file system and organize uh, how you want stuff to appear. I actually have morphs here. Uh, one of the best set of morphs you can get for V4 is the, um, let's see, where do I hide it? It's almost essential for you to get. 
Here it is, Morph Injections. Uh, the base, I think base V4 might actually come with V4, but I'm not sure about that. And uh, Morphs++ plus plus for V4. That's the one that you want to look into. Now we're also going to do these creature morphs here, because we're going to make her into an elf, and I just basically want this to give her some ears. All right, now, well, as I was talking about, I have various preset bodies, so I'm just going to pick one that I've uh, used pretty often before. And that just gives her kind of a slender, a more slender fit. So if you see me undo that. Not significantly different, but just a tiny bit different. And then uh, we'll do the head as well. Now I'm going to go up here and fix those ears using those creature morphs. Mm, don't like those. There we go. Just use those right there. And then we're going to give her an expression, and this is another one where I just have a pack that I use from a store. But uh, some, you always want to give your characters an expression of some sort. The neutral expression is kind of boring. Oh, let's see. Here we go. Find something that looks somewhat serene, but not bland. Uh, that'll be fine right there. Now our arm's sticking out a little too much, I think, so we'll push put that down a little bit. Oh, there we go. Sometimes that shoulder movement can make all the difference. All right, so now we're going to give her... Let's move her head down just a little bit there. I like to tweak poses a lot until I get them just right, and I think I got this one where I want it. So now we're going to add that dress. So I'm going to jump back to frame one. That's that neutral pose, and I'm going to do another off-the-shelf. And like I said, this this lesson is all about using kind of off-the-shelf stuff. And I believe I have it under T'Pol. There we go. And we'll start with the skirt. This is a two-layer, um, a two-layer dynamic cloth. So we're going to do first the underlayer and then the overlayer. So I'm going to do a new simulation. We don't need any drape frames, but I do like to have this cloth self-collision checked. This will make it so uh, the the mesh of the uh, the dress won't pass through itself. Okay, and we take clothify, and it's a skirt. And we're going to set to collide against. And we're just going to pick Vic Victoria 4. Um, I'll do the ground as well. So see if it hits the ground. Okay. Okay, so I'm also going to want the dress to move a little bit in the wind. I don't just want it to be hanging straight from her hips. So I'm going to uh, do that by adding a wind force. I'm going to do that by going up to the object menu here and create wind force. And then you just kind of move it into place. And you may need to zoom out a little. Uh, this one it helps to actually look down from the top using the from top camera. And that way I can rotate it around the Y axis and point it at her. And I'm going to move it so just so it's not exactly on an angle, or so it's not exactly 90 degrees with the, the camera. It's going to be a little bit at an angle. Okay, and I go back to the main camera. Now you notice it doesn't reach her at all. Um, that's what these little white lines represent, and they need to actually go past her. To make that happen, you just turn this range up until it goes on past. And you can mess around with turbulence and amplitude and everything, but... Um, I'm just going to leave it the way it is because I just want it to be kind of a gentle breeze. All right, so once we're ready, we'll go to the cloth room here. Or back to the cloth room. 
and hit calculate simulation. All right, and the simulation finished. It looks pretty good there. We'll add in, we'll go back to uh, frame one, and I'm going to add in that other part of the dress, which is this one here. And for this one, um, the wind force is already affected, so we don't have to create another wind force. And we go to the cloth room. And we're going to create another simulation. This will be the Sim 2. Again, we want to have the cloth self collision checked. Uh, we're going to clothify dress 1 and collide against, add remove. Now we've got to be careful to add Victoria. We don't need to add the ground because it's not going to reach the ground. But we do need to include the skirt so that it doesn't pass through the skirt. Click OK. And then just calculate the simulation. All right, so the simulation finished. It took about 20 minutes. Um, they can start to take a long time depending on the power of your computer. And it looks pretty good. I like kind of there's a nice movement to it here. Um, sometimes you might want to check through a few of the frames in the animation to see if there's just one you like better than the last one. For instance, I like to actually see 20, which was the one I started with. And I think that one actually doesn't look quite as good as what we had with... Uh, a little higher frame. Now the only thing I see it's a bit of a problem and this this is a problem with poser claw simulations in general is sometimes the hand intersects with some of the geometry and um, I could try to fix that by you know reshaping the geometry and stuff but I'm just gonna do something simple here and uh, bend your hand out a little bit. Nothing major, just a quick simple fix. So I guess we're, we'll be using frame 25 here for our, um, for our scene. Alright, so a couple other things I want to do real quick. I want to give her some hair, because uh, I don't like that base hair, and probably change her skin texture. So for hair, let's see what I have in the library. Alright, so we'll use this one right here. Now for hair that is a figure, you'll have to conform it to her head. Uh, hair that comes through the hair menu actually automatically jumps to the head. So we're going to do figure, conform to, Victoria 4. And that'll put it on her head. And since she's an elf, we'll see if we can uh, find some blonde hair. And uh, we'll give her some blonde hair. Okay, and the last thing we want to do is uh, pick a good skin for her. So I think I have one hiding around here that I picked up reasonably new. There it is. And we'll pick the uh, matte base. And we'll make sure and give her some blue eyes. And there's a whole lot of faces here, but I think we'll just go with what it started with. All right, so let's add in one more thing, we'll add in a uh, deer or some animal. I think I think a deer is what I'm going to do with this one. We'll do a nice stag. Now this one's another off-the-shelf uh, component, but this one I think you can get for free. Um, I like it. everything here. I'll have links to it in the uh, in the show notes. And we're not going to give it too too much of a pose, just something slight. Figure uh, use inverse kinematics. Okay, we have the legs are already doing them. Let's give it kind of a step forward, and maybe a little bit of a step back with those legs. And then I'm going to just take the whole body. Kind of move it into place. Hmm. I think I'm going to actually make it a lot larger. After all, she's an elf. She doesn't need to be the same size as a regular person. And 
and we maybe may move her hand just a little bit to fit just have it fit just right. And we'll make the deer's pose a little bit more dynamic. There we go. And that is all we're going to do in Poser. We'll save this off. Save as. And I'm just going to create a, uh, a folder on the desktop for this. And let's call it Elf. And then we'll just save the file. Um, give it a name. Uh, in this case, I just called it Elf. Um, and with that, we'll move on to View. Okay, so we're here we fired up View, and I'm just going to pick an empty scene to start with. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is actually bring in those two characters that we created. And to do that, I click on this little cube here with an arrow in it. And that's going to bring up this sort of file dialog box. But we want to get to the file system, so I'm just going to click on this file right here and go all the way up to the desktop where we saved our character under the name Elf and uh, View will import PZ3 files which is the native poser format for saving files when you get this dialog, if you happen to see this dialog box, uh, just hit no um, I sometimes see this dialog box as well uh, I, if I always just hit no, I don't really know what it is Okay. So we need to remember that um, the uh, cloth simulation was anim an animation and we don't want to import frame zero because that'll give us the uh, the woman in the base post and we want her, uh, you know, with the dress. And I believe we have that on uh, frame 25. Now, view has bases its counts on zeros and poser bases it on one, so you have to subtract one. So we're going to do 24 and click OK to import the uh, figures. They come in looking kind of tiny. So we'll grow them up a little bit larger and sort of put them in our frame a little bit better. Now you can always check with a quick preview to make sure everything just looks okay. And it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to do a couple of things to kind of prepare the scene. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, let's uh, give ourselves some room here, is I'm going to delete the grounds because I never really use it. And then I'm going to go into the sunlight and soften it up, set that up to 5%. Double click on the sun. And here I'm going to uh, set the shadows down to 85%. For some reason it comes in at 100%, which is way too harsh. So uh, we'll set the softness quality up to 1, just to make that a little bit better. Click OK there. Um, in our atmosphere, I'm going to just set the aerial perspective up to 10. This kind of makes it so things in the background get a little bit hazier. And then under light, I'm going to make sure I have global radiosity turned on. This is sort of the best lighting system that you can get from view. And I'm going to lower the quality boost actually to negative 1. This will speed up render time, but it won't really harm the quality of your render that much. And uh, click OK. Other thing I'm going to do is take the sun and move it to a more traditional angle. So it's going to be coming from our left. And maybe a little bit more. All right. And then um, you know, back in the atmosphere editor, real quick. And under uh, sky, fog, and haze, I'm going to reduce the decay down to like 5%. Otherwise, everything's going to look kind of yellowed and orange in this scene. We don't really want that because this is going to be a deep wood scene. All right, so we're ready to put them some ground under these characters. Um, actually, one more thing I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to change the uh, aspect ratio to widescreen. Actually, let's just do standard PC. That's a pretty good size, actually. And it, um, when you create a print from uh, with an aspect ratio like this, it, that's going to fit in a lot of standard frame sizes, which, if you're selling prints, might be an important thing to keep in mind. 
All right, so now let's add that ground. And to do that, we're just going to click right here on the... Uh, actually, something you'll notice that when I did that, the camera jumped all the way up here to the top. Um, that's, that's something that really annoys me. So to turn to... I'm going to just delete the... Uh, the terrain. To make it so it doesn't do that, when you go into your main camera, click on this little thing right here that looks like a picture of a padlock. And that'll keep your camera from jumping around when you create something too close to it. So now when I create a, a, a terrain, it doesn't jump up to the top of that terrain and throw the camera all out of whack. Alright, so this, uh, this terrain is going to be foreground, so let's just kind of shrink it down to a manageable size. Because it's uh, yeah, right now it's set up to be uh, one kilometer by one kilometer. We just want uh, twenty meters by twenty meters. And the Z will just be one meter. Now I'm going to move that up closer to the camera. Actually, one more thing I just thought of with the camera. Jump back here to the camera's properties. I'm going to set this up to 70 millimeters, and this will reduce distortion along the edges. So let's get that camera kind of lined up with our ground. About right there. Let's give that ground a little bit of tilt. Right there should do. Alright, so now we can fix our characters to fit on this ground a little bit better. And I know I'd grown them up larger before, but now we're going to shrink them back down. And move them in range of the camera. Let's kind of position them the way we want them to be, so I'm going to turn them just a little bit. I don't want them quite on center. I can want them off center just a little bit. Uh, maybe make them a good deal smaller. All right, I think that's a good place for them. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the terrain and we're going to put some. Uh, well, for, first we'll give it a nice dark texture underneath. And to do that, I'm just actually going to use the default texture and set the color down to almost black. Well, it's actually black, but it's not quite that low. All right. That's a little bit better. You don't really see a whole lot, but what this is going to do is just be under all the, uh, the greenery that we're going to add. And to add the greenery, I'm going to turn this into an ecosystem. And just click OK here when, if it asks you that. And we'll add a couple of plants. So we'll go to our grass and plants, and let's see, we'll add a, uh, a small palm, a funiculum, and vitex. Just This will just be something that goes along the ground. And then we'll uh, do a quick populate just to see how that looks. Everything is way too large. So let's um, set the scaling down. No, let's just go down to point 0.1. So is there anything else I want to set here? We'll set the density up pretty high, about 80%. Uh, size variation, we'll set some size variation in here. And let's see how that looks. That looks more like about the right size. And over here in the preview window, That looks pretty good. Um, we'll do a quick preview render to see how that looks. And to do it full screen, I'll just dump it, bump it up to here, and here we go. Okay, a couple of things. Um, first of all, our plants look to be about the right size, but because they've kind of grown tall, they've started to obscure our characters a little bit, so we'll move the uh, terrain down. 
but another thing you see is you see there's a lot of white in here. For some reason, uh, view when you load some of the default plants, they have a little bit of uh, highlight on them, but it just blows it all the way out when you uh, under this uh, lighting model. So let's um, fix that so that the uh, highlights and it looks like the fern or the uh, the palm that I used had some highlights on it that we need to get rid of. And to do that, you just click on this little thing here with the three balls, and that's puts you in the uh, a browser, the uh, I guess what you call the material browser. And I'm going to see if I can find those palm leaves. Here they are. And just double click on the line. Go to highlights and then turn that highlight off. And we'll do that with this the stem as well, or steam as it's been misspelled. And then I was going to move this uh, whole terrain down just a little bit. So we'll grab the terrain and lower that just a touch. And now we'll do another quick uh, preview. All right, and that looks a, a good deal better. Now we have some sort of some ground here. Let's uh, put a big tree in right here. Um, and I'm going to pick one of my favorite trees. And this is a uh, this comes with. Um, view infinite and view extreme but it doesn't come with view complete with which is what I had so I had to buy it uh, I think it cost me about fifteen dollars and it's this uh, summer it's called a European ash tree summer foliage let's uh, go back to the four view here And I'm going to move this up into the foreground so it's even in front of our characters. And what this is going to do is kind of going to work as what's called a frame. It's going to create like a border on two sides of our characters. Let's see, we'll make it a bit bigger still. We'll tilt it just a bit to get it away from our uh, the antlers there. And I suppose if I want to make the trunk maybe a little bit larger, I can just double click on the, this here. And under the base subset, increase the link just a little bit. Actually, that might be uh, bottom trunk. Okay. There we go. So now we're not having those those leaves intersect with the uh, the deer's antlers. All right. Now let's put some forest in the background. This is really easy. All you got to do is take a cube and make it very very large. Now it won't be a cube anymore because I'm not making it tall but it'll still be a rectangular solid. I'm going to lower it so that you can't see it in the frame. Like I said I'm going to make it very large. Now you can see it here but I think it's going to probably disappear into the background. All right. And what we're going to do is make that into an ecosystem. So I'm going to double click on this. Go to ecosystems. OK. And I'm going to add that same tree, that uh, European ash tree. Uh, set up to maybe size three. You're just taking a guess here at how large it's going to need to be. Let's go a bit larger. Let's go with six. Let's see if maybe we can move this cube around a little bit. Well, it's looking pretty good, but I can still see a lot of sky through here. And that's just because I don't think I went deep enough. So let's just go a lot deeper into the scene with that. And 
now we're getting a nice deep looking forest behind our characters. You might want to move it around just a little bit to uh, if, some, for instance, the tree that we had was kind of intersecting with the characters there and we didn't need that. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's add in one more tree. Actually, let's just take this other first tree we created. And I'm just going to right click on it, copy, and paste. And that's just going to duplicate that tree. And now we'll maybe change the size and turn it a little bit, make sure it looks a bit different. That'll kind of create a nice frame on the other side for us. Maybe adjust that first tree just a touch. All right, I think it's time for a test render, so let's give that a shot. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I see a couple things I want to fix. Um, this is with our characters here. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to pick this skirt material here, and um, I think I want to make it brighter. So I'm just going to set it up to white on all of its... Uh, various materials and the same with the dress all right the other thing I saw was that there's a lot of reflection on on the skin of her face and her arm as well let's go and set the highlights down on those so we'll select the body here And wherever I see a highlight, see skin, neck, torso, now some of this is probably covered by the dress, but just to be thorough, I like to do this in case there's something that I didn't notice was showing through. Yeah, sometimes when you import stuff from Poser, um, things just get a little weird. Alright, so now we'll do another quick preview. Okay, I'm liking this, but um, there's one more thing I think I want to do. Right now in the foreground, the dark side of all the uh, objects is a little too dark. So I'm going to add in a light just to uh, sort of uh, create a little bit more depth. So we'll go back into the four view mode. And I'll just um, let's pick the uh, pick the tree up here. Just pick an object close to where you want the light to appear. And here's our light. And I'll just move it over here a bit. We'll set the power up to about 30, softness down to, up to about 5. And as you see, it's in just this little preview window here. It's way too bright. What I'm going to do is just change the color down to a, sort of a dark, cool color. Make it pretty gray, pretty dark. And we'll do a quick preview. Actually, I think I'll go a little darker still. And all we want to do is just, you know, make the shadows not totally black. All right, and that I think looks pretty good. So let's send this to its final render. And we'll see, we'll set it up to uh, final render to screen and then uh, this is a size I tend to like which is 5200 by 3900 um, it had it's based a little bit on the size of the uh, the print-on-demand site that I use uh, 5200 tends to be one of the largest sizes you can upload and, and get reasonably large prints uh, any larger and I could go larger but when I go larger I tend to use up so much of my system resources that I have to experience some crashes so this tends to be about the largest safe size I have so we'll go with 5200 by 3900 and um, send it to render okay so the render finished it didn't take very long a couple hours um, we're gonna save it off and to save it you just click on the little thing it looks like a disk and I'll save it up to the uh, folder created here I'm just going to overwrite. I've uh, had a practice render there that I'm overwriting. We'll save that. And I'm also going to save the, uh, the Z depth map. This will let us do some, uh, some layering in uh, GIMP in uh, post production. So we click save that. I'll just save that as elf underscore Z. And with that, we are done with view. 
Okay, so here I have our image open in uh, GIMP, and we're going to do some uh, post-production work. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually create some layers, and I'm going to use the uh, that depth map that I saved for that. And that's this grayscale image here where things that are closer are darker and things that are further away are lighter. And really, I just want to separate the foreground from the background. So to do that, I'm going to uh, go up to Colors here and pick Threshold. Now, what Threshold does is it tries to turn everything to black and white based on sort of a, a cutoff point. And it looks like right about here is what's going to cut us off front between the, uh, the background and foreground. So click OK there. And we'll just select the whole thing. Actually go back there. Edit and copy that. And we'll go onto our main image and we'll paste it there. So edit and paste. Now it's going to create a floating layer. And what we actually want is a solid layer. So here you can see our floating layer. So we'll uh, just click this little thing here that looks like a piece of paper, and that's going to turn that into a solid layer. And then we're going to select the, uh, the color black using the, the color selector. And then we're just going to delete that layer by hitting the trash can. And that leaves us with a selection around the foreground elements. So now all we have to do is copy and paste. And that creates a new floating layer that's our foreground. So now we can separate the background out from the foreground. And what I really want to do though is put something in between these two layers. So what I'm going to do is create a whole new layer and click OK. Make sure it's a transparent layer. And I'm going to move that down between these two. And then I'm actually going to go to the background here. I'm going to try to find the lightest color in the background, which looks to be about this sort of lightish blue back here. And I'm going to use the, uh, the eyedrop tool to pick that color up. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to maybe lighten that and gray it up a bit. And we'll use that as our fog color. So now I'm going to go back to our new layer. And if you want, you can actually give the, the layer a name. And I'm going to use a fog brush. Where are my brushes? Uh, which is a third party brush. And I'll give you a link to uh, where you can find that. It's uh, I guess I got this one free somewhere. And then we'll go to uh, the uh, airbrush tool. And we'll create a pretty big brush. Go really high there. And we just kind of move along through here, creating a layer of fog. And let's zoom out just a bit. There we go. Make it denser along the ground because fog tends to have a little bit of weight and be affected by gravity. And I kind of want to obscure those roots back there. And that looks pretty good. We don't have to hold, do a whole lot here. And now go back to our layer tab. I'm going to create another layer in the foreground. And we'll do just a little bit of fog uh, on top of the, the foreground. So maybe we come down here and just put a little bit down here and make it look like this. Some mists sort of between us and the uh, our characters. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is go to this uh, foreground layer here, and I'm going to kind of fix the colors up. And to do that, I'm just going to go to uh, Levels. And this is going to show me the histogram. And it's going to see, you see that most, and you'll see that uh, most of the values here are in the dark range. So we want to kind of move these sliders down so that our colors stand out a bit, or our uh, all of our values, excuse me, uh, are a little bit more evenly dispersed. Uh, we'll do something about right there, I guess. And if you want to see what that looks like, you can always hit undo to see the difference. And that, that actually helped quite a bit. It kind of brightened up. Maybe I want to even go a little bit brighter. Another way of adjusting colors, and I'll show you that real quick, is to go to Curves. And you can kind of pull this curve to also adjust the values. And you can, and actually, you had that off the screen there. You can pull this curve here to uh, sort of adjust the, uh, the values as well. Right now, I have it as channel value. You could also do the red, green, and blue channels. And the alpha as well, but 
And to uh, see the effect, you can always turn it on and off the preview by just clicking this checkbox here. So maybe I want to make those brighter colors really bright. Uh, maybe it's a bit too extreme. We'll, we'll uh, go a little lighter on that. All right, and the other thing I might want to do is mess around with the uh, the saturation a bit just to see if maybe saturating the colors a little bit more will... Uh, oops. So here we have a saturation slider, and I can slide this back and forth to test out various values. Uh, that looks about good right there. So we'll uh, click OK. And um, I see a little goof here in the uh, th thing. I mean, if it's a shadow or something like that. We'll fix that real quick. I'm just going to use the uh, the clone tool and a nice soft brush. Make it a good deal smaller. Smaller still. And then I just hold down the control key and click somewhere where it's not goofed up. And I can kind of erase that uh, that goof in the, the tree bark. All right, a couple of other little minor things you might want to do is uh, we'll zoom in on the deer's eye here, and we'll just keep on. We'll still use the uh, that light fog color we had, and the soft brush, and we'll put it down pretty small, and we'll just give the uh, the deer a highlight. Actually, let's make it a little bit brighter. I'll just go with pure white for now. That adds a, a hu humongous amount of realism for you know a pretty cheap little move there. We'll do the same thing with her eyes, although we're going to have to make this a really small brush. We'll go with uh, 8 and zoom in on those eyes. And that looks like there's a reflection from whatever the light source is in her eyes. All right, a couple of other things we might want to do is maybe fix the deer's fur up a little bit. And for that, I'm just going to use a smudge brush and a uh, maybe one of the... Uh, let's see what kind of brushes we got. Maybe we'll find some kind of roughish-looking brush that maybe comes with uh, GIMP. Here's one, uh, this Bristles 01. We'll give that a shot. I'm going to zoom in on the deer. And we'll go to our smudge brush, make it a good deal bigger. Hmm, not really getting much of effect here. Make sure I'm on the right layer. All I'm doing is kind of pulling a little bit of fur out along the edges. Maybe if the effect is a little bit too dramatic, make it a bit smaller. Let's get down to 30 size brush. And especially break up these hard lines. I'm just sort of zigzagging back and forth along that shadow line there. up along the ears here. Not much, just a little touch of a uh, of touch of detail to kind of liven things up. Make it look a little bit less like a set of polygons. I like to, uh, around the joints, add a few extra hairs. And there we go. And I think we'll call this one done. 
Let's uh, zoom out here so we can see the whole thing. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. Something I, I like to also do just to sometimes test things out. Here, let's uh, flatten the image out real quick. Is to reverse it. And to do that, you just click on this little tool here and click on the thing. Sometimes this kind of gives you a, a different perspective on it. You might see things you may have missed before. It's a, kind of a good little exercise to do just before you're done. However, I prefer it this way. And this is how we'll save it. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more, or read some of my articles, or even check out some of my art, you can find me on my blog at www.introvertartist.com. And here I post articles on how to make art, how to sell it online, tools that you can use. Uh, I have links to my gallery as well as a, you can subscribe to my newsletter here. And my newsletter is something I send out every Wednesday with news on my latest uh, artworks, articles, videos, promotions, discounts, and I even throw in a few a free computer wallpaper every week. So thanks everybody and good night.